So this week I'm sharing a secret about my utility kitchen build that my husband hasn't spotted for the last six months and that is this end panel is not the same one as the one I installed which you'll see in this video. I'd messed it up, it was too shy and you could see the edge of the kitchen cabinet door and I just wasn't happy with it. I'd promised to leave it but I just couldn't live with it. So this week I'm going to show you how I did that but First, how I did the end panels in between the appliances because it's so useful and it was so easy that bit, but not so much this one. So keep on watching and I'll show you how I did it. I'm gonna first show you how I did the end panels between the appliances. So you'll notice the old washing machine. I later got sent one to review on my blog and I've laid them out evenly to get an idea of how much gap that I've got in between. So I'm removing the washing machine first and got my laser measure and held it on the floor aiming up at the bottom of the worktop to find out the height that I'd need. Then I also took measurements towards the back as well. There's a little bit where it's carpetless. And conveniently, I did actually have a load of spare end panels in my garage from the time my parents came to fit our kitchen. I masking taped it up so I could cut it down to my size. And because it's MDF, I wanted the sealed edge to sit on the floor. So I transferred the front and the back measurement onto the panel and then match those up using a straight edge. And you can see the place on my sawhorse clamped down and I'm just using a handsaw to cut it down. But I am wearing a mask for this, the door's open. I know it's preferable to do it outside but I probably didn't because it was so cold. So once I'd cut that, I then went to check if it was okay but I definitely needed to trim more off the back because I had a windowsill lip protruding. And to make life easier, I thought I'd just measure the depth of the existing unit that I've fitted with the drawers included. So back to my panel again, I am masking taping the back of it and measuring and marking it again. Now you could use a jigsaw for this, but I do prefer a handsaw. I just find it chips less when it comes to these kind of panels. And then I put it into place and I realized that the wall of this section wasn't perfectly straight and the panel was protruding a little bit too much. So I noticed that the high spot in the wall was towards the bottom. So I trimmed a bit more off and popped it back. So I got most of the work done on that one. I moved on to my last one. Occasionally I'd trim any high spots off with an electric plane and this one I had to cut notches out for the plugs. Then onto the end panel which I completely messed up. Now the problem with this was the floor wasn't level. It's probably got something to do with the carpet trim as well. And I tried to cut from the back instead of the bottom to avoid any future possible water damage. But I'm not the best at scribing. However, I made one wrong measurement and it meant I had to make my end panel shy. And when I told my dad, he said it didn't really matter because it's white. So I carried on fitting it for now. However, a few weeks later and off camera, I still wasn't happy with it. So I completely redid it and traced around this panel to do it properly. But because fitting the end panel is exactly the same, I'm still going to show you this bit anyway, but you've just got to imagine it's a little bit deeper, that's all. So I've sealed the cut edges at the top and I've placed it against my end panel and I'm clamping it together. And to conceal any screws, I'm pre-drilling holes where the hinges would go. So by the time the hinge goes back, you're not going to see any of this. And then I'd attach it with a screw. And I repeated that for the top back as well. However, for the rear bottom, I couldn't cut that at all. So I just had to pre-drill a hole and screw as tightly as I could. So now I'm fast forwarding to about March time this year. And rather than measuring exact, all I did was just leave about two centimeters gap or whatever I was able to. And I'd attach using L brackets. Although I found it more useful to attach them to the panels first and then put them in situ. So I'm hoping I'm forgiven now, but at the same time, maybe it really wasn't that worth it because he never noticed it, but at the same time, it was bugging me. So I am glad I did that. But if you do anything differently, feel free to comment below. And if you like the video and you wanna see more, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, bye.